After blasting to $61,000 late last night, Bitcoin was unable to set a new all-time high by inches. They say size doesn't matter, but I always had a feeling that was a lie. Was this Bitcoin eruption a massive fake out, or is there more pumpage in store after some further dumpage? And after nine weeks, will Bitcoin be heading up to our next target? Or are we in for days of pain, suffering, and downright dumpiness? And the entire cryptocurrency market cap surpassed two trillion dollars very briefly today. What, if anything, does this have to do with this dump? Saddle up, little donkeys, because this pony is ready to ride. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Peter Cottontail from the Kids Book. And like a baby, I hope you're wearing your diapers today because we've got a massive massive mess on our hands. Bitcoin has in fact only gone down since absolutely going into parabolic mode late last night. Ever since the early morning hours, Bitcoin has basically just been going down and Ethereum as well. After Ethereum, Bitcoin and some alts were having some absolutely incredible mind numbing pumpage. However, if we take a look on these charts like we're going to do in just a few seconds here, uh, there is some absolutely devious, dubious action at play and we're gonna be jumping in to see what intarnation is going on. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, turn on those ghost notifications so you always get these alerts. And as well, if you're interested, make sure to take advantage of our five Ethereum April competition, only 19 days left, guys. And as well, without any further ado, let's jump in. Wow, so we have some breaking juice as I'm recording this video, guys. Let's start off here on this one hourly chart. As you can see here, late last night, after you know bouncing off of 55 just about three days ago, we were inching ourselves back up here on this hourly chart. And um, late last night, as we crossed above this 21 uh, moving average on the hourly chart here, we initiated that massive blast from about 58,000 all the way up to a little over 61,000. However, as you can see, we did not uh, make a new all-time high here. Okay, take a look at this. The all-time high was barely missed. And in my opinion, that is one of the key little clues for a Bitcoin chart right now is that we are getting a little bit of a dump. And I think it is in large part because the market was unable to provide us with a new all-time high. However, we did actually have a new all-time high here on the entire cryptocurrency market cap um, chart. So the entire value of the entire cryptocurrency market did reach a new all-time high, actually by a fair amount. Um, if we go here, the previous all-time high was roughly about mm, 1.992 trillion. We went all the way up to about 2.061 trillion. So actually a pretty Pretty, I mean, you can see here on, the, on these wicks here, it's actually a pretty big blast off. This purple line is just the $2 trillion market cap. You can see the very first time we came up to it, instant rejection and dumpage. And then you see here, blasted through it, but now we're getting a nice dumpage as well. And guys, actually, before we go any further, sometimes, I mean, very often this does happen. Before big breakouts, sometimes we do have a breakout and then a very, very swift dump. And then over the next coming days, then we kind of had that real breakout. So again, um, before we go any further and look at any charts, the main point of what I was trying to say there is sometimes before a massive move happens, we get a breakout. It does not meet those expectations, a very quick, very fast rejection. And then it sometimes takes a few more days, but ultimately very often it does end up kind of following that trajectory. Okay, not saying with 100% certainty that's exactly what's going to happen, but this is not something unusual. Um, people looking at this chart might be thinking that. They might be thinking, oh, come on, I thought we were finally breaking 60K. I thought we were finally going to all-time highs, and now we're lower than we were yesterday. Um, but again, it's not really super uncommon. So again, if we go to this daily chart, you can see, or the hourly chart, you can see actually, as I'm recording this, this is the lowest we've been since that pump. In fact, we're literally exactly where we were before that massive pump. Right about the low 58,000s, massive pump up. And now look at this, in a single hourly candle. Yeah, it's interesting time I picked to record a video because uh, we're down like $1,000 in the last like couple of minutes, honestly. Um, but yeah, you can see that here, a uh, massive pump up and then a little stair steps down, failed to hold this and then massive dumpage. And that's where we're kind of testing right now. So very interesting to see how this plays out. Now, this is the weekend. Um, we do have some big news coming out next week and I think that'll play a factor as well. But let's take a look at this as well, this inverse head and shoulders. If we go to the six hour chart, I actually kind of like this chart better. Uh, just kind of uh, condenses everything a little more. This pattern absolutely played out. You can see a single six hourly candle from 58,000 up to 61. And now in just three consecutive six hour candles, basically dumpage right back down to where we were beforehand. Now, the key here though, and this can be absolutely normal, this can still continue a breakout, but uh, we are getting into kind of fishy waters, if I'm being totally honest. This is this is not the ideal 
uh, back test, okay? So after a breakout, oftentimes you do get a back test, but uh, this is not the ideal <laughs> price range where we'd be wanting to get a back test. But uh, so far in the short term, if we're above these very short term, six hour moving averages, the 21 and the 50, as long as we're above 58, then it's nothing to panic. If we do break below 58,000, then I personally think that uh, this could actually swing the other way, which is absolutely very dramatic. But again, like I said a few minutes ago with this entire um, market cap chart, sometimes that happens where we get a massive breakout, then a massive dump to fake people out. And then after a few more days, lo and behold, we're uh, actually back to new all-time highs again. So again, that's not actually super uncommon, but um, what I'm seeing on the chart right now is not is not the most bullish thing, obviously. However, if we do get a quick rebound here, then this is perfectly normal. Absolutely devastating. And as well, what we see here with this chart, uh, if we zoom out to the daily again, nothing, I mean, if we zoom out to the daily, really it looks like nothing happened. Basically, I think, and some people are drawing this as, um, let me actually draw what a lot of people are putting this as. Uh, I believe they're just putting it as like a symmetrical triangle, something more like this, um, you know, something like this. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are drawing it like that, which again, symmetrical triangles can equally break out just as much as what I have drawn, which is an ascending triangle, which is what I personally think it is because it fits a lot more data in. Um, if you're drawing the um, symmetrical triangle, I think it's only uh, like factoring in a smaller amount and especially it's disregarding the 60K um, horizontal resistance as being super significant, which I think it's very, very significant. Um, so that's why I have it drawn as this. But um, yeah, as long as we hold, I mean, above 57.5 is kind of like the very key range. And also, especially 56.5. If we break below that, then that's that's pretty bearish. Uh, that's that's actually pretty bearish. If we break below the 21-day moving average again, then I'm going to pretty much flip bearish in the short term. We're not we're not there quite yet. It would be another $2,000 from where we are at this very second at 58.5. But I'm just going to be realistic. If we do flip there, uh, I'm going to get absolutely destroyed on my trade which I'm still in, and it's not looking as good as it was a few hours ago. But if we flip below the 21 uh, moving average, then that uh, then again, that's that's probably ultra bearish in the short term. That doesn't mean we won't be at new all-time highs by the middle of next week, which again, I personally still think is the case. So again, ultimate, uh, ultimate opinion for me of this video is I'm still bullish on Bitcoin over the next few days. And I still think we are gonna be setting new all-time highs here very shortly. And this is a temporary setback, what we're seeing right now. But uh, nothing I'm seeing right now is anything alarming. Again, sometimes this does happen. And as well, what we're seeing with Ethereum, oh, Ethereum's actually looking um, a little bit better, to be honest. Um, yeah, because Ethereum had that back test of about 1950-ish, uh, the previous all-time high area on this daily chart. And uh, yeah, we had gainers all the way up to like a few dollars underneath 2200. And now we're getting a little bit of rejection, but still so far bouncing at the very top of this EMA ribbon. Ethereum's still looking pretty bullish. And um, yeah, let's take a look at some alts actually. Um, what is down the most right now? We have basic attention token because it was up so much down a lot. And the rest are just kind of, um, you know, within a few days of fluctuating between the normal prices. But yeah, we do see Bitcoin, or sorry, the entire cryptocurrency market cap getting a strong rejection around that $2 trillion mark, guys. And again, what I said at the beginning of the video, I think that's significant because the $2 trillion mark is just a huge level. Uh, obviously, I mean, for the entire crypto space, $2 trillion is huge. $1 trillion was huge. Let's go back to uh, $1 trillion. You can see how much action there was around that $1 trillion level on this chart. There was a lot. I mean, it took us... It took us, uh, you know, pretty much an entire month to really get out of this range here, right around one trillion. One trillion is like basically right here. Sorry, like right about here-ish. And yeah, we kind of were getting rejected over and over. And now we're going on to that two trillion dollar mark. And again, I personally think that is another big level for the cryptocurrency market as a whole. And I think it's something important to factor in. And um, yeah, ultimately, I think the market still looks very bullish. But this sharp rejection, I personally think is going to be short-lived. And I think by the middle of this upcoming week, like I said, Tuesday, Wednesday-ish, I still think that we're very much on track to be very bullish by then. But um, yeah, if we just zoom back to Bitcoin for right now, yeah, we do see a little bit of a bounce kind of right at this area right here, uh, right about 58.5, which is very important that we hold. And um, yeah, actually so far it's actually bouncing, as you can see on this chart, kind of right where this inverse head and shoulder would be like a breakdown. You know, these two moving averages that I mentioned on the six hour chart around that 50, uh, 58,000 um, dollar level. So the main point of the video, definitely a rejection, okay? Prices have dropped a lot, especially in the last 20 minutes since I've been recording. So um, it's probably not gonna be as interesting after I get it uploaded because it's already happened. It looks as though we might actually be getting more of a bounce here anyway. So that's pretty good. 
But again, ultimately, like I said multiple times throughout the video, sometimes this happens with a breakout, especially because we're at such a gigantic uh, macro level for the entire cryptocurrency market cap. And I still see no reason yet to be bearish on Bitcoin. Uh, I still think we're going to be very bullish going into the middle of the week. However, again, like I said, if we break below the 21 DMA, if we go below 56,500 for Bitcoin, then that's kind of a different story. You know, if we have a daily close below 56.5, uh, that, then I say, let's get pretty bearish. And again, that's only about $2,200 below where we are at this very second. It's going to be different in 10 seconds from now and by the time you see this video. But uh, as long as we get closes above like 56-ish, then ultimately I don't think there's anything to be bearish about. Well, so if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to enter uh, our competition, 19 days left, 5 Ethereum, um, all the different ways here. I'm going to be adding another one or two ways to get a few extra entries there. Um, out of all of the entries, less than 1% of them are counted as invalid, um, but there's actually a ton of entries. So even if it's less than 1%, that still means there's a lot of invalid entries. And invalid entries, uh, as I mentioned, they're just like if you're using the same IP and creating multiple accounts or trying to increase your chances um, fraudulently, I guess. Again, I don't do any of this. This website that everyone uses and I pay for does everything and it seems to be working very well so far. Uh, the point of this website is actually to prevent people from like cheating people out of competitions, which is why I chose this website. Um, so yeah, I pay for it and it does it for me. So if you guys ask me questions on why isn't this working or why, why is it doing this, I have no idea. Without any further ado, that's it for me. Bye-bye.